One of the jewels in our so-called crown of geriatric medicine here at Wild Cornell is the house call program. The house call program brings caring to where patients are, to their home. Uh, sometimes it brings technology to their home that people find surprising. When someone is older, they need help. They need people to care about them. And this is what the house call program really is about. It's taking care of the elderly and treating them as they're still human beings, not just something that's pushed under a rug. The second that I first walked into a patient's home, I had found my place. I feel like I make a difference. I have a lot of fun. It's always adventurous. I never know what to expect when I knock on a door and they open it and say, thank God the nurse is here. In 1996, uh, before the Wright Center, which is our outpatient practice, was established, I, I filled a lot of my clinical time by seeing patients in their homes. And uh, I came upon uh, one of the residents, Veronica Lafaso. I met Mark Lax, who was uh, a new director of a geriatrics division here at New York Presbyterian, and uh, was immediately sucked in to join him and uh, start a house call program, which is what we did. We started to get calls coming in, um, can, how do we get on this program, can we join up, and that's really how it was built, just really from the ground up. I found out while I was in grad school that a doctor made house calls, so Ronnie and I began to work together as student and preceptor, and um, towards the end of my tenure as a student, I asked jokingly, would you ever take a nurse practitioner on board in the practice, and her answer basically was, when do you want to start? I didn't envision how great that need would be, especially in this demographic. And yet, my very first house call was to someone on 76th Street and 2nd Avenue, which you would think would be a lovely area, and uh, was absolutely amazed at how people were living. Many of these patients are people who are underserved, um, either through physical frailty or cognitive impairment. You know, people cannot get to a physician, um, or they cannot get to healthcare. We bring everything that's needed to the home. It's not patchwork, it's, it's an entire primary care team. When people hear that, you know, we make house calls, they're often very surprised and they say, oh my God, doctors still do that. And when you meet someone in their home, you're meeting them on their turf and you find things that uh, that you wouldn't expect. And it's also great when, you know, we can see what it's like to be living there, to see that their medicines are correct, that, you know, they're eating properly, that you really get a sense of um, how well are they taking care of themselves. The doctors and the nurses and the social workers when they're involved or community agencies involved are all working together for the focus on improving care for the patient. And so we, in many ways, keep them from emergency room visits um, by proactively going out and making sure that they get their basic preventative health care. I actually read about the house call program in the New York Times. My mother was having a really hard time getting around. She had very bad arthritis, uh, uh, severe... And spinal stenosis. And spinal stenosis. My mother didn't want to go to the doctor anymore. It took so much out of her. And then when we started with the house call program and Dr. Lee breezed in, mom didn't have to do anything but sit and listen and they were so attentive to her and it just made our life so much easier. Walking into someone's house, it's almost like you can see the shoulders of the caregiver drop a little bit. They take a little sigh for a minute to know that someone else is there who actually cares about what's going on. I've known Tim Reto since 1970. When you're taking care of somebody for the first time with dementia, you have a feeling that you're not doing the right thing. So it's been so welcome that 
doctors come see the environment that he's in and say you're doing a good job you know that's the uh, that's the most emotional thing we've we've got hundreds of them caregivers who have shown us uh, strength that uh, i often wonder if i would have myself that's one of the parts of doing this job that's so much fun because you meet wonderful people and they stay with you some people sneak under that radar and they're in your life forever when I first met Roland, I saw him sitting in a chair in the living room. He was surrounded by beautiful things. He would always have those sparkling eyes and a, and a warm smile for us, and Felice cared for him so beautifully. Roland loved having Dr. Lafaso and Deirdre, especially because they were women, and Roland adored all women and he liked people around him, he liked people fussing over him. Dr. Lafaso and Deirdre brought medical students into the home, not that often, but from time to time. She loved the interns coming in. I would say my mother loved it. <laughs> it was nice for her to see young people. She loved young people. Right. It was kind of exciting when you're stuck in, a, in this one couple of rooms, right? It's nice to have like the, the different people coming in to talk to, I mean you know, something to look forward to. One of my other initiatives at the college is to try to create curriculum to teach these young people the reality of what medicine is, and that is taking care of people for the long haul. And the house call program really has been sort of a, a secret weapon uh, in getting students interested in geriatrics. So what we did was we asked the students, instead of coming back from a house call, giving a medical summary of what happened, we wanted un to understand better their thoughts and feelings about the experience. Jonathan came in with, I think, two other students, and I was oblivious to everything. And about a month after Roland died, I was having dinner with Deirdre and Dr. Lofaso. So she said that Jonathan wrote this wonderful, wonderful poem. And so he lay there, all 102 years of him, in his own home, surrounded by his art collection, with his masterpiece of 30 years holding his hand and whispering, I'm right here, I'm right here. Jonathan's poem froze a moment in time that I thought that I had lost forever. I hope that the poem really captured what I was so um, humbled by and so moved by. And above and beyond, house calls allowed a, a patient and a patient's family to have health care the way that they wanted. Happily, the program now is going to expand greatly and start to really blossom. We have a new name for our house call program. Uh, it's called the Lipper Gruss House Call Program, and we are connecting with DeRote on the west side that has some of the most creative programming for older adults in the city. And the program now provides two meal delivery programs. They provide a friendly visitor. They have a University Without Walls program where uh, homebound patients can call in like a phone conference number um, and attend courses with other adults on the phone on different topics. I mean, anything from art history to medical topics like osteoporosis and exercise. What we'd really like to see is, in fact, a research study that um, would evaluate what the costs of medical care are for patients who are receiving these house call services versus the patient population that's not. This is primary care for patients who have more chronic disease than on average. And the kinds of prevention that we're involved with uh, involves uh, uh, the prevention of, of isolation, the prevention of injury, all kinds of problems. These are people who would normally not have any health care and so we, in many ways, keep them from emergency room visits that would prevent a hospitalization that would cost thousands of dollars for the community. To find the support for something like this is um, difficult, and that's something we're constantly aware of and constantly trying to accomplish so that we can keep this service going. I think people should donate to this program because everyone is going to need this program at some point in their lives. If I won the mega, I would definitely give uh, 
half. Half. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not all. <the> whole. <laughs> to, uh, to the, to the uh, house call program to the right center because I think it's a tremendous thing. I mean, it was ideal for us. Uh, we could not have done it without them. They don't realize that they become part of the family and they make your life better. The house call program is a success, usually because of Deirdre Mull. And I'm constantly in awe when I'm with her as she counsels family members. My three colleagues are um, young and bright and committed, and the more young people that are signing on to this kind of work, the better off the healthcare system will be, for sure. There have been so many occasions where I'll be having one of my typically crazy days, and it's always in those moments when something transforming happens. It's that, that moment that someone has knitted me something, or stopped me to say how much a difference the program has meant to them. And that's when I get the greatest satisfaction about being in a place like this that would support the Lipper Gruss House Call Program and really change the lives of, of, of so many patients and their families.